Today we're going to be doing the mimesis of following the man with a pitcher of water. Uh, now this is uh, taken out of Luke chapter 22. And uh, right off the bat, uh, this here seems to be a uh, seemingly a very insignificant story until you really understand uh, both Luke chapter 22 and the Odyssey in which they got this from. Uh, first, I, I wanted to start this off by reading Luke chapter 22, starting with verse 7, only for a couple verses. This is a story in Luke where it's the uh, it's a festival of the unleavened bread, and they're getting ready for the Last Supper, all right? And they, the disciples don't know where Jesus wants to hold this Last Supper at. They're a little in a little bit of confusion over this. Uh, just to kind of give you a little bit of context here of Luke chapter 22. Let's start with uh, verse 7. It says, Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare it for it? They asked. He replied, As you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, all furnished. Make preparations there. So here in Luke 22, again, it's the it, it's the festival of the unleavened bread, day of unleavened bread. They're getting ready for the Last Supper. And the disciples don't know where you want to hold this Last Supper at. Jesus says, go into the city, go into the town. And follow the man with a pitcher of water. And go into the house that he leads you into. And then that will lead you to the room that we're going to have this Last Supper at. This is important to understand the context here in Luke 22. Because this is strictly taking out of Book 7 of the Odyssey. I want to give you a, a little bit of um, <clears throat> synopsis here in the Odyssey. You know, I, I'm assuming you have watched probably a lot of my other Mimesis videos Mimesis simply means imitation, and imitation is, was something very common in the ancient world. The book of the Odyssey is all about Odysseus. Odysseus went to the went to the Trojan War. And that that is the uh, the book of the Iliad, uh, written by Homer. The Odyssey is the events that happened after the Trojan War in route to get back home to Ithaca, which would take a total of ten years. The first, the, the Odyssey in itself is 24 books long. The first five books of the Odyssey is all about Telemachus, Odysseus' son, getting preparations to go out and try to find his father. Now, uh, Telemachus and everybody believes he is dead and gone. Uh, he's not coming back. But Telemachus is in hopes of if he can't find his father alive, at least get some, some clarification on how he died. Uh, where his body is, um, all that good stuff. That's pretty much what the first five books of the Odyssey is about, is a preparation. Telemachus would go talk to uh, the old man Nestor. He'd go talk to Menelaus, other Greek uh, soldiers and warriors. And he'd get information uh, before his journey to go try to find his father, Odysseus. Once you get into book six, this is about when Odysseus was on the island of Calypso. This is where the story really starts with Odysseus. He's on the island of Calypso, where he had been held, pretty much held hostage there. But the god Hermes had come over to this island of Calypso and instructed her that Zeus told her to let him go. So she has to end up letting uh, Odysseus off her island. Odysseus builds a raft, a boat of some sort, and uh, he, he's on his way trying to get back to Ithaca. And during this uh, 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 journey on the waters, the god Poseidon tried to destroy him in every way. He, his ship had, had uh, wrecked, it crashed. Uh, he's in all kinds of distress. But he winds up on this island with the Phaeacians. Uh, this is where the, the boat had crashed down near, uh, near the uh, seashore. And he was able to swim to the island and get onto the island of the Phaeacians. And he ran into uh, the daughter of Alcaneus. Alcaneus was the king of the Phaeacians, right? Nausicaa is his daughter. Nausicaa is the one that found Odysseus on this island and led Odysseus to town to where her father, uh, King Alcaneus, is. 
King Akinias is supposed to instruct Odysseus on what to do and and how where to go and give him some uh, uh, some uh, you know food and water and all kinds of things that he needs on his journey. Treats him very well. So in route to the father's house, Akinias is where we're going to start uh, our little uh, topic here. In book seven, as Odysseus is following. Nausicaa into town to get with her father, King Alcaneus, uh, where Odysseus will get all these uh, items that he needs. And he's going to tell uh, Alcaneus all about his story that will, will, you know, that is to come. All that good stuff. So as he is following Nausicaa into town, this is where we pick up um, the story here. And very early on in, uh, in book seven says, there's only a couple lines says, presently Odysseus got up to go towards the town, and Athena shed a thick mist all around him to hide him in case any of the proud Phaeans who met him should be rude to him, or ask him who he was. Then, as he was just entering the town, she came towards him in the likeness of a little girl, carrying a pitcher of water. She stood right in front of him, and Odysseus said, My dear, Will you be so kind as to show me the house of King Alcaneus? I am an unfortunate foreigner in distress and do not know one in your town and country. Then Athena said, Yes, father stranger, I will show you the house you want, for Alcaneus lives quite close to my own father. I will go before you and show you the way, but say not a word as you go, and do not look at any man, nor ask him any questions. I stop right there. So, in the context of this story, Odysseus is following Nausicaa into town, but a little girl appears to Odysseus. Now, this is actually the goddess Athena in disguise, and Odysseus doesn't know where to go. He's he's unsure of where what house is Alcaneus. Where does he need to go for this? What what room does he need to go? Just as the disciples of Jesus were unsure what house to go to, where to go, well, where this room was going to be. And Odysseus talks with his little girl, which is actually Athena in disguise, and she's carrying a pitcher of water. Just as Jesus tells his disciples, when they go into town, you'll meet a man bearing a pitcher of water. Both Odysseus and the disciples of Jesus are to follow this individual that has a pitcher of water. Why? Why are they following this individual with a pitcher of water? Because this individual, whether it's the little girl dressed up, uh, uh, the little girl that's actually Athena in the, in the Greek story, or the man bearing a pitcher of water in the uh, gospel story, the reason Odysseus or the disciples of Jesus have to follow this individual with a pitcher of water is to show them the way into, into the house of where this room is, okay? And if you go on further context, the disciples end up following this man a pitcher of water into the room, and it leads them to the upper room where they will have the Passover. Odysseus follows this individual with a pitcher of water into the house of Alcaneus, where they have a feast and they have a supper at. And this may seem like a very minute story. It may seem like a very insignificant story. But what I'm trying to project to you is, even the smallest little stories that are found in the Gospels have their source in Greek literature. Um, this, this, this whole idea of following an individual bearing a pitcher of water into a house to show you where a room is, where a feast and a supper is going to be held, is all taken from here in Book 7 of the Odyssey, where Odysseus is to follow an individual bearing a pitcher of water into a house to show them where a room is at, where they're going to have a feast and a supper. It's the same exact thing all the way down the detail. And when Odysseus finally gets to this room and 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 meets Alcaneus, and they have this this feast, this dinner or supper, he goes on to tell Alcaneus all about his his journeys. That's the whole point. Uh, Alcaneus gives him all sorts of good things that are going to be required. Uh, I, Odysseus fills him in on, on, on his entire, this is where the real heart of the story of Odysseus takes place because he's thinking back. He, he's re he, he's going back and telling him the whole story here that leads all the way up until Odysseus actually returns to Ithaca. So 
But the, the main point of this video is to show you the mimesis act of the disciples of Jesus <clears throat> were told to go meet a man bearing a pitcher of water. Odysseus is told to go meet an individual bearing a pitcher of water. The disciples of Jesus, once they met this man bearing a pitcher of water, this man was going to lead them into town, into the house in which he goes. Just like Odysseus is going to follow this individual bearing a pitcher of water into the house to where she goes. Then, once they go into this house, each show them this room where a feast or a supper is going to be held. Even the most smallest, minute stories are taken from Greek literature. And I've said it before, I'll say it again, that 99% of the Gospels are, are just strictly taken off of Greek stories and, and all the way through. Now, you know, fast forward it just a little bit. What happens with Odysseus? This is book seven of the Odyssey. So when Odysseus leaves Alcaeus, okay, when he leaves here, where does he go? They actually go on their journey, and the journey actually uh, uh, in the next couple books, they, they wind up with the island of Cyclops in book nine. And then the island of uh, uh, um, uh, the Hyperion, the sun god, with the cattle in Book Ten and Eleven area, you know, which signified. If you read, if you watch my video, Mimesis of the Resurrection, you'll understand that in Book Nine of the Odyssey is where the idea of the resurrection, the empty tomb, uh, and I really highly recommend you watch that video. But this whole idea of following an individual with a pitcher of water into a house that shows you where a room is, and they will show you the way. That's a key word there, too. In this uh, book nine, this uh, this little girl that's bearing a pitcher of water, which, again, is really Athena in disguise, says, follow me, I will show you the way, okay? Just as Jesus tells his disciples to follow the man bearing a pitcher of water, he will show you the way to where? To this upper room where they're going to hold the Last Supper. Just like Odysseus is led to this room that will have a feast or a supper of sorts. It, every little story is is a mimesis act all the way through. And I encourage everybody to watch or uh, to read these books for yourself. Read the Odyssey. Read the Iliad. The, you know, also Euripides' book, the Bacchae, Euphigenia, Virgil's in need. You know, uh, uh, of course, uh, Hesiod's uh, Theogony, Works and Days. All of these Greek tales are taken so when they constructed the Gospels, they took every one of these little stories. Some are small, some are big. Like I mentioned, uh, a big story, the empty tomb resurrection is taken directly off of Odyssey 9, where Odysseus is entombed in this uh, tomb with the Cyclops, and his men follow him out of this tomb dressed as sheep. Uh, there's a large rolling stone that nobody could move out of the way. An earthquake caused the stone to roll out of the way. Uh, absolutely fascinating. But even the short, smaller, more minute stories like this one here of like you find Luke 22 of following an individual bearing a pitcher of water is even taken off of Greek literature as well. It's, it's amazing. Once you see it's just one after another, after another, all the way down. But I just wanted to do a short video. Uh, and I know you might think uh, that this is a little more insignificant compared to others. But even, I, 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 I want to stress this, that <clears throat> even the insignificant ones, the really small ones that you find that nobody talks about the Gospels, you know, you don't, they're, they're not part of your big stories in the Gospels, are still taken from Greek literature. I mentioned it in uh, my video, Gospel of Dionysus, a very small story that's also found in Luke. Uh, if you remember the story of, uh, uh, I can't remember, remember his name, he was a rich publican. Uh, Euchias, or, or so I forget, I forget the actual name of the individual, but he was a rich publican, a chief among publicans, and he always, uh, he always wanted to see Jesus, right? So he went to where Jesus was going to be one day and he climbed up a tree so he'd get a better vantage point on Jesus as he passed by. That, that even that's a, that small little story is still taken from the uh, Greek literature, the Bacchae, written by Euripides. In a story where Pentheus always wanted to see the Menids. So he went, Pentheus went to where the Menids were, where they were going to be passing by one day. 
Pentheus went up into a tree to get a better vantage point as the Menids as they passed by. Even the smaller, more minute stories are still taken from Greek literature. But I just wanted to do a short video on this, uh, the following the individual bearing a pitcher of water that you find in Luke uh, 22 is taken here from Odyssey 7. Please read it for yourself. But, you know, it's not just a little story that is exactly the same. It's the whole theme of it all, and it fits in there absolutely perfect. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Like always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you know, reach me. Until next time, thank you very much.